Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship at All Saints on this, the 23rd Sunday after Pentecost. Please stand as you are able. The opening hymn is on page two of your bulletin. Canticle of the Sermon.
Blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory, Glory to God forever and ever. pray together. Blessed Lord, who caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, grant us so to hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated for the reading of God's word. In our first lesson, the prophet Malachi tells of a day of foreboding and doom when all evildoers will be laid waste and consumed. Those who hold fast to the Lord and trust in God's name shall prevail, and the Son of Righteousness shall establish their vindication. A reading from Malachi chapter 4, beginning at the first verse. See, the day is coming, burning like an oven, when all the arrogant and all evildoers will be, will be stubble. The day that comes shall burn them up, says the Lord of hosts, so that it will leave them neither root nor branch. But for you who revere my name, the sun of righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Let us read responsively Psalm 98. Sing to the Lord a new song. For he has done marvelous things. With his right hand and his holy arm. He has won for himself the victory. The Lord has made known his victory. He remembers his mercy and faithfulness to the house of Israel. And all the ends of the earth see the victory of our God. Shout with joy to the Lord, all you lands. Lift up your voice, rejoice, and sing. Sing to the Lord with the harp. With the harp and the voice of song. With trumpets and the sound of the horn. Let the sea make a noise and all that is in it. The lands and those who dwell therein. Let the rivers clap their hands. And let the hills ring out with joy before the Lord when he comes to judge the earth. In, his, in righteousness shall he judge the world. And the peoples with their hands. From 2 Thessalonians 3, 6-13. Now we command you, beloved, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to keep away from believers who are living in idleness and not according to the tradition that they have received from us. For you yourselves know that you ought to imitate us. We were not idle when we were with you, but we did not eat anyone's bread without paying for it. But with toil and labor we worked night and day so that we might not burden any of you. This was not because we do not have that right, but in order to give you an example to imitate. For even when we were with you, we gave you this command. Anyone unwilling to work should not eat. For we hear that some of you are living in idleness, mere, mere busybodies, not doing any work. Now such persons we command and exhort in the Lord Jesus Christ to do their work quietly 
and to earn their own living. Brothers and sisters, do not be weary in doing what is right. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory, Glory to, to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. When some were speaking about the temple, how it was adorned with beautiful stones and gifts dedicated to God, Jesus said, As for these things that you see, the days will come when not one stone will be left upon another. All will be thrown down. They asked him, Teacher, when will this be, and what will be the sign that this is about to take place? And he said, Beware that you are not led astray, for many will come in my name and say, I am he, and the time is near. Do not go after them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified, for these things must take place first, but the end will not follow immediately. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes and in various places famines and plagues. And there will be dreadful portents and great signs from heaven. But before all this occurs, they will arrest you and persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogues and prisons. And you will be brought before kings and governors because of my name. This will give you an opportunity to testify. So make up your minds not to prepare your defense in advance, for I will give you words and a wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be betrayed even by parents and brothers, by relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name but not a hair of your head will perish. By your endurance, you will gain your souls. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. 
as I read and studied and gathered my notes to write this sermon. I was drawn to the early Christian writer and poet Ephraim the Syrian, who lived in the 300s and was a major theologian of the early Byzantine Eastern Church. He wrote, Let us turn in continual prayer toward you, our only hope, O Lord. Our heart is filled with sadness. Bring joy to our sadness, Lord, and give refreshment to our burning hearts. Day and night sorrow and affliction surround us. Cool, O Lord, the flame of our hearts, for apart from you we have no hope to comfort us in our grief. Place your finger that gives life to all things on the pain concealed in our heart. Let our soul not be robbed of your strengthening, O Savior, that we may not be plunged into the waves of despair. The end is near. There is no doubt about it. The long season we in the church call ordinary time, marked with the color green and stories of life and growth from spring sowing through summer and harvest draws to an end. I came in this morning and the palm trees in the chancel that have been here since Palm Sunday gave up the ghost. (laughs) They were more brown than green. A stark reminder that the end is near. And outside the leaves have fallen, they are dry and dead underfoot. The frosty landscape and the news of the day point to storms of uncertainty and the dreary winter that lies before us. The end is near, there is no doubt about it. The warnings are dire. The tone of today's text are ominous. Malachi, whose name means my messenger, warns that the day of the Lord is coming. And the psalmist refrains that the Lord will judge the world. And Paul bluntly warns those in Thessalonica to stop idly waiting for the Lord's return and get back to work. And as history moves toward fulfillment in Luke, there will be frightening signs and events yet to come. So good morning. (laughs) I don't know about you, but I long for the warm comfort of the ordinary. I pray for a day and a week that is just ordinary. I long for the warm summer breezes off the lake and the beauty of autumn rather than the ominous chill that lies ahead. Thankfully, we who follow Jesus, we the baptized, know how to live in these mean times. You can interpret that as mean times or in the meantime, whatever works for you. We are strengthened for the living of these days by God's word and God's sacrament. And we are called to rally around the invitation of the apostle who says, brothers and sisters, do not be weary in doing what is right. Do not be weary in doing what is right. This was most apparent to me in the midst of my darkness and doom and gloom this week, when, especially amidst my grumpiness about premature Christmas decorating, no judgments, Holly and I met this week to finalize our Advent and Christmas worship. And I, too, found myself listening to a little classical Christmas chorale music as I longed for light and love during these days that are growing darker and cooler. I struggled to feel the spirit of the upcoming seasons in the midst of this doom and gloom that I felt creeping in all around me. But amid all of the doom and gloom, in reading these ominous texts, I found comfort and gospel good news in the psalm that is appointed for today. This symphony of creation brought me joy. And as I struggled to pick a text from which to preach, I kept getting drawn back to this psalm again and again. And 
Now you know that you might hear references to the Psalms occasionally in my preaching, but rarely do they take center stage. I think this is a week for the Psalm to take center stage. Today we hear Psalm 98 after Malachi's words that God will shine like the sun despite the fires that burn all around us. It is also a reading that is appointed for Christmas Day because for we who follow Jesus the Christ, he is the son of righteousness. And you can spell that S-U-N or S-O-N. As that psalm sunk in and as this word of God dwelled in me richly this week, I began to see how even in the autumn of this year or in one's life, nature rejoices and sings no matter the season. And we are to encourage one another not to fear earthquakes and ominous portents to come. As I pulled on the strings of this psalm, I came across the written work of 38-year-old church musician and composer, Eric Pazdizioria, a Methodist who works in the Mid-Atlantic. In his writings, I was able to see how the text for this week, and especially this psalm, helped to move us from fear to comfort, from trouble to grace, from death to life. And he did this writing about one of our most beloved Christmas carols, Joy to the World. Now, I haven't asked for us to sing that quite yet. Even I can't do that. It's still too early. But he writes about how Joy to the World really isn't about Christmas. And technically, it's not even a carol. But it is one of the set of paraphrases of the Psalms converted into hymnody by the 17th century father of English hymnody, Isaac Watts. Shout with joy to the Lord, all you lands. Lift up your voice, rejoice, and sing. Sing before the Lord when he comes to judge the earth. Becomes joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her king. Let every heart prepare him room, and heaven and nature sing. Watts' adaptations of the Psalms transferred the ancient Hebrew songs into a Christian context. That meant that all of the verbs in the psalm in the future tense were changed to the present tense. Since according to we Christians, the promises of the covenant are fulfilled in Jesus the Christ. So the Lord is coming in the psalm is transformed into the Lord is come in Watts. What the ancients looked forward to with eager anticipation we have as our present reality. Sing to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the voice of song, with trumpets and the sound of a horn. Shout with joy before the King, the Lord. Becomes joy to the earth, the Savior reigns. Let men their songs employ. Let the sea make a noise and all that is in it, the lands and those who dwell therein. Let the rivers clap their hands and let the hills ring out with joy. Becomes while fields and floods, rocks, hills and plains repeat the sounding joy. Before the Lord, when he comes to judge the earth, in righteousness shall he judge the world and the peoples with equity. Becomes he rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love, and wonders of his love. Now the idea of God's judgment as a cause for rejoicing may sound a bit odd to us, but it is a frequent refrain throughout the Psalms. And the wonders of his love are in truth and grace. Beloveds, the message of this ancient psalm and 300-year-old hymn, recognize that God's truth and grace at the end and in all seasons will bring justice and peace to a world in doom and gloom. And that is joy to the world. Let us stand and profess our faith with the whole church. 
We believe in one God, the Father, to the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We acknowledge the church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Brothers and sisters, do not be wary in doing what is right. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Therefore, let us say, sing to the Lord a new song. O God, you have done marvelous things. O God, remember your mercy and faithfulness to your church. Give us your words and your wisdom. May we have the strength to bear the name of Jesus in all circumstances. Sing to the Lord a new song. O God, we have done marvelous things. O God, remember your mercy and faithfulness to this nation. Save us from arrogance and self-reliance. Grant us to be a nation that favors peace over war, life rather than death. Sing to the Lord a new song. O God, you have done marvelous things. O God, remember your mercy and faithfulness to all of creation. May the seas and their creatures noisily praise you. May the rivers clap their hands and the hills ring out with joy before you, their creator. Sing to the Lord a new song. O God, you have done marvelous things. O God, remember your mercy and faithfulness to our city. We pray that there may be work enough for all our citizens, that they might earn a living that promotes dignity and health. Sing to the Lord a new song. O oh God, remember your mercy and faithfulness to all your children, especially those who are sick and suffering. Come to them, lover of souls, with healing in your wings. Sing to the Lord a new song. O oh God, you have done marvelous things. O oh God, remember your mercy and faithfulness to all who have died. Bless them for their endurance. May they forever rest in that land where the sound of weeping is heard no more. Sing to the Lord a new song. O oh God, you have done marvelous things. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all of our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Seeking reconciliation with God and neighbor, let us remember the gift of baptism and confess our sin. God of mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, against one another, and against the earth entrusted to our care. We are worried and distracted by many things, and we fail to love you above all else. 
we store up treasures for ourselves and turn away from our neighbors in need. Forgive us that we may live in the freedom of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. When we were laid low by sin and guilt, God made us alive together with Christ, forgiving us all of our trespasses by taking our sins to the cross. For freedom Christ has set us free. Rejoice in this good news. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. Let us share a sign of that peace and joy with one another. The congregation may be seated for a few brief announcements. Are there announcements this day? Don Holm. At this time of year, we think about next year and who our leaders are going to be. Um, there's a, at the, in the narthex, there's a, a little form that you can fill out if you're interested in serving on the vestry. Uh, there is no prior requirements or even actually church membership uh, for being on the vestry. And uh, we look for a variety of people. So um, if you are so inclined, you can talk to me um, after church about it, but you can also fill out this form and um, uh, drop it in at the office or give it to any of the nominating committee members, which Bob Parker is our chair, and then uh, Jerry DeGeorge and Lorraine Crocker. It's rather ironic that three out of the four of the nominating committee are eight o'clockers, <laughs> and I am the sole spokesman for, uh, for this huge crowd here. So, <laughs> so don't hesitate to uh, talk to me or any of the other members. Thank you. We also have an opening for a delegate to convocation and convention. Lee White. I'd just like to uh, remind everyone of the upcoming Clear Lakes Corral holiday concert. Uh, it will be on the 7th and 8th of December uh, on a Saturday and a Sunday, and uh, I have tickets, Plax has tickets, you can buy them at the door. <coughs> we think you will enjoy it. Thank you. Lots of hands, Linda. Hi, beginning in Advent, December 1st, for four weeks, I will be facilitating contemplative prayer meet session. It's an ancient form of prayer. I'll be leaning on the teachings of Thomas Merton, and the recent writings of Richard Rohr, his um, little book called Just That, Just This. Thank you. Sunday is at 4 o'clock in the Children's Chapel downstairs. Good morning. December 7th is also um, the hospice annual Tree of Memories ceremony. It takes mm. place over um, next door here at the hospital. I put information downstairs if you would like to participate, if you would like to purchase a dove for um, a past loved one, please do so. Thank you. You done on this side? <laughs> Diane. Lots of announcements. Uh, good morning. Please join us for coffee hour after the service. Uh, thanks for, to uh, Joanna, Jeff, and myself. Thank you. Sandy, you have an announcement? First of all, I would like to thank all of you who attended the fashion show for Lord & Taylor Friday night. It was a resounding success, I think. And we're going to be able to be very generous to Hope House. And then uh, Outreach Luncheon is this Thursday. We're a week early because of Thanksgiving. Uh, Tuftonboro United Methodist Church will be uh, providing the food. And if you would like to help us, you can see Marge Morris or myself after service. Thank you. And we have a bench swap, as noted in your bulletins. It's great to have Andy Campbell with us today in the loft while Holly is down the street at First Congregational Church. And uh, maybe we'll make a habit of this, Andy. <laughs> Let us with gladness present the offerings and thanksgivings of our life and labor to the Lord.
Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. All thanks and praise are yours at all times and in all places, our true and loving God. Through Jesus Christ, your eternal word, the wisdom from on high, by whom you created all things. You laid the foundations of the world and enclosed the sea when it burst out from the womb. You brought forth all creatures of the earth and gave breath to humankind. Wondrous are you, holy one of blessing. All you create is a sign of hope for our journey. And so as the morning stars sing your praises, we join the heavenly beings and all creation as we shout with joy. creator of all. Your word has never been silent. You called a people to yourself as a light to the nations. You delivered them from bondage and led them to a land of promise. Of your grace you gave Jesus to be human, to share our life, to proclaim the coming of your holy reign, and give himself for us a fragrant offering. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, you have freed us from sin, brought us into your life, reconciled us to you and restored us to the glory you intend for us. We thank you that on the night before he died for us, Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, said the blessing, and gave it to his friends and said, Drink this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so remembering all that was done for us, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection and ascension, longing for Christ's coming in glory and presenting to you these gifts your earth has formed, and human hands have made. We acclaim you, O Christ. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Christ Jesus, come in glory. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be to us the body and blood of your Christ. Grant that we, burning with your Spirit's power, may be a people of hope, justice, and love. Giver of life, Draw us together in the body of Christ, and in the fullness of time, gather us with all your people into the joy of our true eternal home. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, we worship you, our God and Creator, in voices of unending praise. Blessed are you now and forever. Amen. As our Savior Christ taught us, we now pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. Jesus said, whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. All are welcome to the feast.
Let us pray together. Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with spiritual food and the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Now send us forth a people forgiven, yield, renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. Please stand as you are able for our sending blessing. Keep our anger from becoming meanness. Keep our sorrow from collapsing into self-pity. Keep our hearts soft enough to keep breaking. Keep our anger turned to justice and not cruelty. Keep us kind, reminding us that all of this, every bit of it, is for love in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Claim the good news. Thanks be to God. Thank you. Thank you.